Hello, my name is Eli Davis. I am the author of the Unity extension Record and Play, and this will be a mini series on how it works, how you can use it. Um, I try not to go into too much detail, just enough to get you started so you, that you can go forth and look at documentation and figure out the rest yourself. So these aim to be quick. If you have any questions, please email me located inside the documentation. Um, so let's get started. So in front of me, I have a empty, empty Unity project. I have just the extension imported um, and a empty scene. So I'll just create a plane for reference because I'm weird like that. Um, and we can start by recording something. So to record anything in Record and Play, you first need to attach a subject behavior. So what a subject behavior does is it starts to capture the information around a single object, so a single subject. It's only responsible for one thing. So recording can compose of multiple subjects. So to record other things, you'll also need to attach this subject behavior to them. So you'll be presented with a few parameters. The first parameter you see is name for recording. So if you want to override the name present, like the transform name, you can give it a second name. And this name will show up inside the recording file itself. Um, this may or may not be useful to you. If you leave it blank, then it will default to using the transform's name. I will name it box just for sake of example. So the second parameter is frame rate to record at. So right now at 10, that means this recording software, or sorry, this subject recording software. So um, each subject can have its own frame rate. So this specific subject will be, will have its position rotation captured 10 times every second. Now that sounds low. However, the playback software, the thing that looks at your recording and tries to reanimate it, uh, interpolates between these frames. So even though it's recorded at 10 frames a second, it will, act, it will still look smooth. What you're losing when you have these lower frame rates is accuracy. So this is up to the designer, the, the game developer, the person using this extension. If you care about accuracy, if you really want the most accurate recording you can get, you set the frame rate to record at as uh, you know your expected frames per second, so 60 or whatever. Um, Setting it to zero, I will make a record. Uh, every new frame is will get captured. Um, you, so you know, I think with like uh, some fighting games that they cap you out at twenty four like inputs a second. I don't know. You would set it to twenty four. That's an example when you would cap it. Anyway, so you you set these per subject and. With that, um, you're you're setting the accuracy of the playback. Um, sp uh, I think ten is a good number. I encourage you to play around with that. Um, but yeah, so you can explore that further later. Um, the recorder itself is what the subject behavior is going to be reporting to. So multiple subjects are going to be recording reporting to a certain recorder. Um, there's two ways to create a recorder. The first way is programmatically, and but because this is a scriptable object, you can actually create it through the editor as well by uh, right-clicking, we'll say create, and we'll say record and play recorder, and you can name it, so my recorder. Um, and then we can drag this in, and now it has a recorder. And then finally, the last parameter you can mess with is the minimum delta. So this is also a parameter you mess with, and it's a trade-off between accuracy and size of your recording. So this recording software tries to be smart, and it looks at like uh, positions or uh, predictable positions. So if your object's just moving in a straight line at a like 
one meter a second or whatever, that's pretty predictable. We don't need to be capturing, you know, 10 frames a second if all it's doing is moving in a straight line for 10 seconds. Um, we're going to capture only two frames to represent that. Um, however, we can, let's say there's a little, little jitter involved. So it's moving in a straight line, but there's a little jitter. This minimum delta will determine whether or not we care about that jitter. Um, this minimum delta set is pretty low. A minimum delta of zero means that every tiny minute change is considered a new position and we must account for that. Um, the higher the number, the more the uh, position or rotation must change before we consider it a new actual position and we capture it. So another thing to keep in mind is that these positions and rotations are recorded separately. So like, for example, a turret never moves. So it would be very silly for us to keep up with its position 10 times a second. Um, so really with a turret, you know, uh, you're only concerned about its rotation. So that's something to keep in mind in these final recordings the number of positional captures and rotational captures may differ, so don't rely on that. Anyway, so I will set this back to the default. I will create another object just to go through the motions again. We're gonna create a sphere. We're gonna add a subject behavior to it. Uh, we will assign it, and this will be another thing or something. And I'll actually set it at five frames a second or something. So just for sake of example. So how to record this? How do we record this thing? Um, well, we can do it through the editor. This is more for like a debug-ish thing. So if you're trying to figure out something that's going on in your game, you might attach these, you might slap them down real quick and then open up a record window and then start to record it. So to record anything, first the game has to be in play mode. Um, and so we can call it a demo. And there's two different types of recording methods. One is the subjects where we actually assign of the objects in the scene to it, but we already have subject behaviors attached to these objects. So we can go the recorder route and then give it our recorder. And now that everything's set up, we can say start recording. And I'll go back to the scene view. And I can mess around with these objects. I can move them around and rotate them. And I can do it separately to one another. And that looks like a good recording. So I can unplay the scene or hit stop recording. It will pop me out a demo and then we should be able to view this demo. We see it's 12 seconds long, two subjects, zero custom events. We'll go into that in a later tutorial. And we can have this view playback button that will open up a playback window. And we don't even need to enter play mode or anything. We can just say play. And there are our objects. So you see moving uh, one and the other and the editor. Um, you will notice that there are both cubes and that's because by default if you don't specify an actor these actors try to um, act out what the subject did. If you don't specify an actor it's going to default to a cube. So if you want to not do that we'll stop it and we'll set custom actors and you would drag in the prefabs um, to represent these objects. So I could create a sphere prefab and a, a cube prefab just for the sake of playing it back, but I won't. Um, there's a loop option or whatnot. So you notice that uh, the left one right here is the cube and the right one is the sphere and the sphere actually had a smaller frame rate. Um, so you notice that they do sort of, oh, it looks like I took off the loop. Um, they do, you, there's this loss of accuracy 
in this sphere. So it's not going to be moving exactly with the cube. Um, and you see that in the very beginning of this. And so you, you lost that, that extra information. So if that really matters to you, you can uh, incur the cost of memory and up your frame rate. That is all up to you. So with that, um, I'm going to end the first of this mini series. We have looked at building a recording through the editor and playing it back through the editor. The next video will look into building a recording programmatically so that you don't have to do this clicking around. This is more for in-game stuff. Uh, see you there.